when they're dry, you can't shift them. So unlike watercolour, where you can lift out, you can't move the inks. So what I have to do is start wet. I'm going to use a nice big hake to wet my paper. Now this is a 140 pound stretched hot press. The reason I'm stretching is because I don't want uh, cockles in this particular case. It's easier when it's flat. If I'm doing something like this, I would normally have it flat because I can drop colours in to go out. I can control them. Here I'm going to have colours that are going to slide down the paper. I'm bound to have that happening. But it doesn't matter because as with acrylics, you can go over it with the pastels. So if I make a mistake now, or I get some lovely controlled accidents, I can tighten up on them with the pastels afterwards. Normally need to look along the paper to see if I've got it wet enough. So don't make the mistake as some people do. I've known people who've tre stretched paper like this and then gone back and cut the paper off and then try painting on it because they think it chemically changes it. You leave the paper on stretched with the gum tape until the painting is completely finished and dried and stretched out again. So wet, and I have to keep that wet or damp. If I don't, the edges will become hard. If I want hard edges, that's fine, like sound with watercolour. But I don't want hard edges at this stage. And I can tint, as with watercolour, this is what I'm going to work from, for fun. Let's start with the light colours then, with a little bit of and it's beautiful, the effects you can get with this, they're so luminous. Now it's pretty warm in here, so I'm going to have to keep going. Uh, I'm going to have to work very rapidly. All I want to do then is, I'm not going to bother about the lightest colours, because I can go back in with the lightest colours later with um, pastel. That's what I said about the watercolours, if we need them. Is that ink you're putting on? This is the acrylic inks, FW acrylic inks. Remember, these jars of acrylic inks you also have a nozzle in them, like an eyedropper. So, if you've got your paper flat, you can actually draw with them. And you're not limited to doing this sort of work, wet and wet, on paper. You could have an ordinary canvas, prime canvas, and use these. You can paint oils over acrylics, you can't paint acrylics over oils. So, we could do wet and wet effects, just like watercolours on your canvas and then you could use acrylics over that or you could use oils over that. So let's open the minds up and that was the next thing I'm going to go to. All these tips. Adventure. How do you have an adventure without risk? It's not an adventure is it without risk? Are you afraid of being a fool? Who's going to see your painting? Are you going to waste a, a canvas, a piece of paper? So what? Paint over it again or whatever. Do something else with it. Take the risks and have an adventure because you'll take a step or two forward even if you take one step back occasionally. I don't want hard edges, I don't want anything to dry off yet, not yet, I'm not ready yet. A bit more turquoise, it's just my turquoise gone, I know I've got some somewhere, should I put some out? No, can't see it now, here we are. Right down there, let's put him in and do that. It doesn't really different to get some tone in really at the moment here. I wouldn't normally have that, I'd be more in control. I'd be a bit more in control of myself. And there. Let's not worry too much. Beautiful colours we've got here to use. Very, very loose. Just enjoy the effects you can get. I can do quite a bit with this hake. I mean, I'd normally now be going on to a, an, a large oval mop, which I love, one of my favourite um, brushes. But today, I'm going to use this hake quite a bit. Can I ask what sort of things are you looking for in your photograph when you're choosing the colours? Because the colours obviously aren't exactly what you're seeing there, are they? So... Yeah, I'm using the, I'm just taking from these colours. But because I'm, I'm wanting to see these colours coming through, so I'm looking through the colours to what I'm going to place on top in purer colour later, in hopefully single strokes. Um, so you're thinking more like about light and dark and choosing... Yeah, yeah. Well, the opposite, I mean, the, first of all here we're seeing already, we're seeing this business of good old colour hue, Mr Hue. Um, 
the warm and cool yellows, the warm and cool blues, the purples. The, so I'm playing these hues together to pull one colour out to another. So if I want something warmer, I'm not necessarily putting warmer on, I'm putting something cool next to it. Um, let's take that here for instance. That opposite in the colour circle to yellow is purple. So if I put a bit more purple, which is the purple, let's have a look and see, that's the purple. If I put purple in here, it's going to have quite a different effect. I don't mind it trickling down because I'm going to be able to pick up on this later. It's no worry. Light against dark, warm against cool, roof against smooth. Be brave. You've got to be brave doing this. You've no, you've no choice. Um, you know, you've just got to go for it. It's that lovely animal. Go for it. Because I know I can come back in with the lights over this later. I'm going to deliberately make that darker here because I want to bring those... <coughs> I'm going to put lighter pastel over this afterwards. So I don't really mind... Just to have fun. And if I want to spread that more, then... Just enough, just so to spread. If not too much, I'll like just trickle down the hole, which is anyway, trickle down the hole. Canvas. Mad. But as I say, be brave. Don't, uh, you can't pussyfoot with something like this. You've just got to get in there. And... I always notice that this technique has absolute attention from students when I'm painting. <laughs> they think, what on earth has you got to bring that back into anything? <laughs> Fun. Just the colours alone are fun. I mean, you know, this is... Right, let's go. Now I've done my, my mid-tones. My lights are being left to the end. I've got some of the lights in. Now I can start to go much darker. I can do the darks with my... Now, when you're doing marks, try to make your marks... That pencil marks, try to make your marks about what you are painting. So you know, your marks should be about the branches, your marks should be about... <coughs> the leaves or whatever. Um, if you're drawing lines around things and you must make tram lines around them, no amount of drawing will make that have three dimension. If you don't have the lines go, it can be very nice. There's always an exception to every rule. This is the only way. No, it's not. Um, but generally speaking, if your marks, when you're doing an outline or something, if the edge goes very light, you make it very light. If it's a very broken, rusty edge, you make it very broken and rusty edge. Make your marks about what you're painting. And the figure just starts to appear there. If we, we can paint around things, you see, we, can, we don't just have to paint them in. We can actually paint around the edges of things to bring them out. Right, just about, just about ready to um, start applying pastel, I think, on that. So I've got my underpainting colours to glow through. Got a bit darker on that one yet. <laughs> so I'm getting slightly hard edged now. I don't mind at this stage because. I'm going to go into more detail at the stage anyway, so... Right. Still got 20 minutes for tea, not really badly for this one. Uh, what I want to do, what I want to try and do, is use the side of... You see I've got my two boxes of pastels, and I have one box with the papers on them, which I normally use when I'm doing films or teaching, because it's got the numbers on them. But if you leave the paper on your pastel, especially these big ones, you tend to only use the tip of the pastel. It's an automatic thing, so you get dotty and dashy. 
So I take the papers off the sides of most pastels to actually use them, which means I can use them sideways, because I want to come into here and actually block in over this ink sideways uh, and put the lights and darks in. I want to do like I have been doing with this, with this technique. I want to have blocks of colour, nice and fresh, with this lot glowing through. That's my intention, but it'll happen, I might something else, but with a bit of luck it will. So I want to put in things like this with one stroke or two strokes or the shapes of these, and then things like the lettering I can go in with more detail on later. I may have to just bring that down slightly more yet. Not to lose that totally now. Right, so I've got a list of that dress. While that's drying off, let's have a little chat about things. Right, stay wet palettes. You all know how to make your own stay wet palettes. Sandwich box, two layers of paper towels in the bottom. Put a piece of grease proof on the top if you want to, especially if you're going to use the palette for mixing and for storing the paint, because if you're going to use it for mixing and you go straight onto paper towels, it goes all furry. I use a sandwich box about this size, but I have a lot of colours. And with the lid on, that will go to about six months. The paints will not dry. Did you know you can freeze your oil paints on your palette? You can actually put a palette full of oil paints into the freezer. But please don't forget to put some cling film around first so you get multicolour sausages. <laughs> Scumble. Scumbling is just putting the dry pastel over the surface, just gently of the paper. Um, broken colour we can use with scumbling if we've got a texture of paper. So broken colour is one next to another, like an impressionist picture. Red next to yellow dots make orange from a distance. If you've got textural paper and we put a thin layer of one colour over another, we'll have those very, very tiny dots, which will give you a broken colour texture, which is great for the sky. There's a bit of fun, and I'm going to deliberately do that here. I'm going to go for a, go for a, a, little, a little animal again. He's here. And use the pastel sideways. It's not quite dry, look. Look how already I can get a lovely effect with the pastel. Um, I want this light area here. It'll be a bit drier yet. <laughs> right, but then let's go a bit lighter there. So I'm going to start building up these, these colours. I'm just using the pastel sideways on. Hopefully I can find the right one. They get so mucky. How do you clean pastels, do you know? Yeah. Rice. Rice, yeah, or Rice. tapioca, whatever, it all works. Um, where are we here? That's that bit there. I just want to do nice clean shapes, I want to just block, 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 I want to try and simplify this down. Just for a few shapes if I can, and I'm going to use my, um, so I've got all these lovely darks here to use, and I'm going to use some of my fluorescence as well, I think, today on this. Because that's what I'm saying, I'm not saying mine is the only way, you've got to do it this way, left to right, whatever, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying there are so many ways you can work and just open your minds and explore and have fun and try because that's where you're going to learn. It's just drying out enough, I can just start to put heavier pastel. I want to just go to make one stroke here and uh, have these things just happen. One piece of colour. And one piece of colour can change an entire painting. And how many times have I seen that with people doing signatures? You know, an awful signature can spoil a painting, not just doing it badly, but in the wrong place or the wrong colour. I've often changed my signatures five or six times until I get the colour that actually works on the painting. It's a part of your painting. And just one colour can change everything. I mean, for instance, if I take... Um, let's take a nice light yellow a minute here. Uh, that and I do that there, then it changes all the yellows around it because it's a lighter, cooler yellow. How one colour just quick marks. And all I'm doing now, I'm putting the right colours, or approximately the right colours in the right shapes in the right places, to, and I can glaze across with them when I want as well. So, in other words, I can scumble over this. Just with a few marks. We want to keep it clean, simple, and now the, um, the, the shapes that you saw before that were turning, they'll start to make sense as I put one colour around another, or within another, as we cut into it. And this is what I wanted to do today, even if I don't get finished, you will have seen at least how this can work for you. Things are just starting to just pull 
out. Jigsaw method, right colours, right places. And if I get them in an approximate, even if it's just an effect at the moment, but this gives us a lovely loose style. I'm keeping the whole thing loose. I'm not going tight in any one place yet. I can tighten up as I go along. And the different blues and greys, I can change them whenever I like. So I could take a very light turquoise. I can put this light turquoise grey against other colours here and it will totally transform those colours to next to it. Now that one green, that one blue grey now changes all of the blues around it. So this is a much cooler grey here than this one. If I come down here with this one, look how that changes that. If I go to go much stronger with some ultramarine, for instance this figure over here. And a bit of dark there. Those head is. Keep the colours shapes simple. Uh, yes, a bit a bit warmer there. Slightly warmer turquoise. Just a couple of colours and a figure starts to appear. We're not trying to paint the eyes, the nose, the those go in at the end if you want to put them in. Let's just find our our basics at the moment. So that light comes out there. Down here. It's a grey, blue, grey down there. It's more of a purple grey. So we'll find that one. Don't just work along things. If you're doing an arm, then work across it as much as... Don't just work down arms, don't just work across things as well. I hope you can feel my pleasure in doing this because you, know, you just... It's all appearing. It's just it's jigsaw. It's, it's just great fun. It's what the painting's going to be about. Um, and I've got to keep comparing these colour hues. So here, I've got to keep looking at what, um, what a warm... Let's take a bit of mauve here. That's coming down inside the door there. That's an important colour because this mauve is going to play against the, the blues. It's, it's warmer than those blues. One colour. It changes everything, and I've got to keep really looking at this. I can't stop. I can't just say, right, that colour there. No, I've got to say, where is that colour? Where else is that colour? That colour comes up here. That colour comes in here. That colour comes down into the background here, amongst all of these shapes. And it changes all the colours around it. It even comes down the side of his face a little bit here, and into the head here on the back of that arm there, around here, the background there, around him here, around there. Little bits of colour and everything suddenly starts appearing. Keep looking at those colours. Let's find that colour that's in here, look. And I could now start to make some illusion of, of lettering there. I'm not going to put it all in in detail, I don't want to do that, I just want to have a feel that there's glass ice cream here. C'est ça. Francais. En français, je peindre ce tableau pour toi. Especialement. C'est la technique impressionniste. Here, and that's colours coming into there. Just hinting now at the tables. Look, a few legs of tables, a few legs of people. Just a few hints. Put every single one in. Gradually, bit by bit, I will build this up. Move pastel. You can either use bread. You can use a stiff brush. So if I've got too much pastel, for instance, I want to get much blacker here. Let's find a stiff brush. Oh, that's a um, clay shaping tool, by the way. If you haven't seen, that's a rubber tip to it. I hint at them because the whole thing has to be equal. 
So if I, be, if I took the faces beyond um, the rest of it around it, it was done like a sore thumb. Nothing to say you can't. I know an artist in New Zealand who sent me, showed me his technique there, very kind of him. But he does the reverse to what you would be taught. He paints all his figures in first, loosely still, and whatever loose features and everything else, and then goes back in around them with loose wet and wet watercolour. And it works wonderfully. There's no one rule, is there? Everything can work. So, for instance, if I wanted to have a, a, a face here, if I just wanted to hint at this face, I'll just go that, that far at the moment just to give you an idea. Okay, there's his hair, and if I just want to hint at where the eye is, I only have to do one mark, just one, simple. You don't have to draw everything in. I can show where that mouth is, the nose is there. I can show his dicky bow here. What more do you need? It's all at the same stage. So we don't start dotting the I's and crossing the T's. This guy here, um, he's got a piece of dark coming down. This is very important because the, the shape here comes down and around the face. And that is quite important to show that face out. And then we'll just show his eye slightly there, down with a bit of shadow, a little bit of softness there. That dark comes right the way down there. Don't really need much more than that. Just a hint. Yeah, yeah. If I want to go into more detail, I can do more and more and more. And the same over here with this figure here. We know he's here. Um, but if I do that line down there and then a bit of dark in front of him, that helps to bring that shape out. I can blend slightly there. I can bring the chairs and things into here. There's that table coming down there, which is very dark. Down here, which is very dark. So I want to give you lots of ideas. I've just done a series of um, seven um, articles on inspiration for the SAA. The first one's up. There should be another five to come up. The first one is about textures and how to make cheap textures. And I've done these huge paintings that I did for Washington Green using PVA glue, filler, resins, um, seeds, peas, beans, um, and making you know whole scenes that are beautifully textural and then covering them in resin. Um, there's all, tech, all sorts of, of ways of, I've, I've been paintings using uh, reeds, for instance, uh, on marshes, using spaghetti and then gluing it all on, mixing wool with PVA glue to get the seaweed, mixing um, polystyrene, broken polystyrene with PVA glue to put on. Wonderful fun you can have. Um, but it's, it's all, they're all coming up there, so you'll see them on, on the SAA. They've got the textural one up already, so you can go and see that now. We've all got something to give you, that's the point, to share. And I just, I mean, I should come and hopefully I'll come and join you with some of your painting days out in the Arctic. It's an interesting place. Or I have invited you over to my gardens this year if you want to come. But no, I don't charge you. I use, I've only got a small garden, but I've tried to make it like a, a mini um, money garden, you know, so there's, it's June, July, there should be lots of dolphiniums and poppies and, and fun things. So you're welcome to come over and paint, paint there with me. If you ask, want any of my help, you can have it. If not, just enjoy. Um, how are we doing? Oh, lots of time. So, I mean, I, I mean actually, I'm going to carry on. Um, you're going to get your money's worth, dinner's worth. Um, but you can already see the potential for you. You can already see the water, the pastel, the inks. You could do it with watercolour, but remember, if you're going to do it with watercolour, you've got to make the colour much, much stronger than you expect. If we did that one, this one here with the snow scene, the colour is much, much stronger than you at first think. Remembering that watercolour actually dries lighter, doesn't it? Anyway, it's fun, isn't it? It's all new to you. <laughs> but you've got to have reasonable pastels to do it. You can use the cheaper inscribes for pastel work, and I do keep them for some of the brighter colours. But the cheaper inscribes are much harder, and you'll find they'll cut into the paper or they won't mix with water. So you've got to have reasonable colours, yes. Um, what are we going to use there? We'll have a little bit of a warmer colour just there, I think. Just a little bit of reflection on the end of the nose, or um, even a little touch like that can totally change things. On his cheek here, on the end of his nose there. Just a couple of touches could just change everything. You know, just 
where's the touch, where's the touch, just one colour, right place, keep it simple, keep it clean, keep it pure. Yes, it's lovely to see you all again, thanks for inviting me back, it's nice to catch up with you all again. See you. We can, we can indicate lettering here. We don't have to write all the lettering in. We can just make it look like there's some lettering there of some sort. Mark by mark by mark, just approximately where they are. Some deep turquoise maybe there. Maybe different green again. This is a very, very light green there. Let me see what that does. That one colour can make such a difference because it brings out then the bluey greens. I want that here the same maybe. Just around his face. So we've got green against red. Now Constable used that a lot. If you know Constable's paintings you'll know that in nearly every single painting is a little red figure because the green is opposite to the red and the red would bring the greens out and the green would bring the reds out. So a little bit of green is going to suddenly bring out all the reds here. Might be shading into there, some of it into there. Might be some of it coming onto his... Yeah. You would think, oh, Dad, don't make a mess to start off with, and then make the mess and then work into it and enjoy. <laughs> don't be so afraid. You haven't got to be pristine to start off with. You can gradually pull it out, sculpt it out of the. Now, what I do with my photographs. Yeah, but too soon. That's right. Get the whole background loosely. Get the effect of with watercolor. If you get the effect of light first, wet into wet, and then you go gradually wet onto drier, drier, drier. Your edges get sharper and harder, don't they? That's how you use watercolor. So the same with this. In a way, we're starting very, very loose, and then gradually. Let's look at these greens and things and blues again it's here now. Different shapes and colours that are. And that is a totally different turquoise too. So it's it's important that we get these. Is it photographed an original or have you contrasted it? So I change them, yes. What I do on my photographs is I do posterising. So what you will get is, you can pass it around if you want, you'll see that if I posterise it pulls the shapes out and I can see those individual shapes more clearly and more abstractly. We start loose, we finish tight, we start large, we come down gradually. I can just keep hinting at these tables and do you see in the apostles Peter? Hmm? Do you see in the apostles afterwards if you're doing it on a canvas? Do you do you Oh you mean I switch you mean the fixative? Yeah. No, I don't use fixative for the very reason that like I said it takes the bright tones down. Um, it's similar to using, I mean, some people say you can use hairspray instead of fixative. It's greasier, it's not a good idea. I find it takes all the very light tones and highlights down. And if I'm using as I normally well, it just do, it's doubles out. Not, it? As soon as you, if, you, if you spray a fixative on it, it kills the That's what I find. of the colour, yeah. doesn't it? Some people, and I know there's many people use a technique where they use fixative partway through the painting and fix everything and then work over again. That can work. 
but I don't use fixative at the end because it kills those lights for me. Yes. <laughs> and I don't find the problem of it coming off on the glass and things normally. Make sure you lay your pictures on the backs or like that. Yes. Don't ever put them on their fronts. <laughs> but you see, if I've used water and pastel, they're fixed anyway. So it's only those last coats which, you know, which, which won't be fixed that can be a problem. Um, normally I'm all right. So if you put some water over that because you don't want to just dump the brush over it. Um, if you put water in no, because what would happen then is you would probably take it, it's like smudging it, isn't it? If you push it or touch it for something, it's going to kill that surface. It's like using your fingers. So I only use water with the first coat to fix. And you're quite right, what I would do now is I would stand back and look at this more and more and more and stand back and see what I've missed. Like I'm just doing that figure now, I need to come back and say, well, you know, hang on, where do things finish here? Does it come dark around there? Is there a dark piece here? Is it dark down there? I need to stand back and look and then come in afterwards. But I wouldn't go Necessarily, I wouldn't go much further than that because it has its own charm. But this is the point that if I'm giving you a way to paint loosely how you want, and you have the choice doing this as to when you stop. You don't want to go too far, you know, you can easily overdo a watercolour, but well, it's possible with a pastel just the same. You don't want to go too far, we want to keep the spontaneity, we want to keep the, the beauty and looseness. I don't want to lose that that we've got here. With it being possible, do you put a coating over it to stop it? No, that's so what I'm just saying. I don't use a fixative. No. All I use is cellophane just to keep them tied on the surface. Right. But fixative, I find, brings the lightest tones down a bit and yeah. lose the sparkles. But I'm not against a technique that people use where they use fixative part way through to fix the entire lot and then put those last coats on. Mm -hmm. That's why. So a wrist there, you know, it's important, there's a little bit of white there, it's important we have that. And these little bits of colour, a bit of light coming around there, it's important. These are the little things I want to look for now, the salient points, the most important points. One colour can just change everything, so I want a bit of this orange fluorescent going into here. I'm glad I got this far for you because you can see how it works. <laughs> right, this is where I've got to be careful. I want to, I mean, it's quarter to the last, but I don't want to just show you at this stage. Not the really mess of my expensive mount is just what this will look like when it's mounted up, hopefully. Mm. Oh, wow. it's lovely. It's lovely. Enjoyed? Yeah. So lovely seeing you again. <laughs> thanks for coming and thanks for inviting me again.
Thank you.